this would all be fine until I acted in that dream, like, out loud, in front of everyone. How's he doing? one of the babes asked. It wasn't lost on me that she didn't ask me directly, by the way. She knew any response I had ready to go would be ridiculous. Studley? Ah, looks like he's doing great, Neil said, prompting laughter from all enjoying my ear-to-ear grin and chattering teeth. Meanwhile, what Studley was doing in his mind... Uh, fuck third person. My mind? Well, let me tell you what I was going through. On the black screen of my eyelids, a scene jumped to life in full technicolor reality. I was an executive in the offices of the NBC network presiding over a meeting. It was so vivid. I stood, wearing a linen suit, leaning against my desk, and pardon the expression, between two ferns, as I was breaking news to some sitcom stars we had under contract. I know, this is really fucked up, but on my fucking life, this is what was going on in my head. I was breaking the news that the show wasn't doing well in the ratings and that they'd be moved from Thursday night to Fridays. And that's when I heard myself interrupt the real-life conversation with, Bummer about the show, you guys, but at least you're not getting canceled. We're just trying out a new time slot. God is my witness, I said that. Out loud. Then I woke myself up after I heard what I just said. I looked at the girls, one of whom stopped passing a joint to Neil and squinted her disbelieving eyes at me. They were all staring. Dude, what? She then blew out her hit in staccato laughter, and everyone else joined in. I began to explain, but there was no use. I knew I just had to keep my eyes open for the rest of the night, otherwise I'd see and star in my little movies. But it was no use. After a couple more act-outs, I figured it was time I excused myself so I could be alone in my room to experiment with this sorcery. And to jerk off. Because holy shit, I felt great. The girls eventually went home, and Neil had patched it all up. A week later, they threw a rave in their backyard and came over to invite both of us. Neil took two of the girls home, but I hung out at the party socializing. When I came home, I found Neil in the bathtub getting his ponytailed quaff shaved bald by them. That has nothing to do with anything, but it illustrates just how weird we got. But yeah, when I roll, I'm pretty much a babe in the woods and should probably wear a helmet. Years later, when I was driving across the country from Boston to L.A., my roommate and I stopped for a spell in Vegas and decided to hit Babies, the club at the Hard Rock. I had about 30 press pills in my Mega Man vitamin bottle for the journey. I was rolling my tits off. We ended up meeting these girls and started making out with them. Then they started making out with each other and pretty much forgot we were there. Bummed out, Damien made his way to the bar and I scoped out a seat. As I waited, I lit up a cigarette. The polite guy next to me offered me an ashtray, and when I reached out to grab it, I realized I was grabbing and pulling on his shoe. Wasn't an ashtray at all. Sorry, I'm rolling, I said, and got up and left. As I looked for Damien everywhere, I got a little tired and decided to plant my hands onto a seat back and lean for a bit. However, as soon as I leaned, I discovered it wasn't the back of a chair. It was a woman's head. Oh boy, Greg, you better get out of here. When I tried to extricate myself from that awkward situation, I fell. To the applause of everyone watching. Thankfully, the bouncers got me to my feet, then the door, because I needed to leave 20 minutes earlier. The fresh air felt amazing, and soon Damien found me. We decided it would be a good idea to head to the after party at the Spearmint Rhino. I remember two things. Seeing Corey Feldman walking in past the line with a couple hot blondes, and once inside, passing an absolute babe in shimmery clingy pants, a tight shiny bra-like top, fuck I wish I knew girl wardrobe terminology, her hair and pigtails, sparkling eye makeup and lipstick, sucking on a lollipop. I was smitten. At this point, I should tell you, I had no idea Spearmint Rhino was a strip club. I thought it was one of those stupid club night nights names being held in the joint. I mean... I don't remember seeing stages or poles in the section of the building where we were. It was just a dance floor with booths. I mean, I think. It's a little blurry. Point is, I checked her out up and down as we almost passed each other in the nuts-to-butts crowd. She checked me out up and down, too. Hi, I said. Hi yourself, she said. Want to dance, she asked. Fuck my life. I can't dance to save my life. At all. I've never been able to bring myself to try. I don't even attempt moves privately in my apartment. My move is conversation, jokes. Loud packed places are my kryptonite. I didn't want to blow it with Space Baby, though, and I had about one second before she moved on to other options. What to do? What to do? Um, I confidently whisper yelled into her ear. I don't really know any moves, but if you want to show me some stuff in the corner, we can try it and bring it to the dance floor. 
idiot. Then she grabbed my hand and led me to a seat in the corner and sat me down. She then started grinding on me, seductively sucking on that lollipop, never breaking eye contact. Which sucked because I wanted to feast my eye teeth on her awesome bod. Man, this was going well. But how was I going to learn moves sitting down? Then she took off her shiny top thingy, unleashing a perfect pair of artificially enhanced breasticles. Oh shit, wait a second. What are you doing? I asked. I'm giving you a lap dance, hun. What did you think? I thought you liked me, I said babe in the woods. You know you're in a gentleman's club, right? Um, I do now. Fuck. How much is this gonna cost me? 150 so far, she said. Okay, I groaned. Keep going. (laughs) We ended up hanging out and exchanging numbers, and I got some cash back selling her E the next day, so point me, kinda. Anyways, back to Boston. It was study hard, work hard, and party hard. And I soon got a reputation as a fun dude to hang out with, which was fine by me. Once my friend Scotty, the best nine-fingered bartender you ever saw, got wind that I could hang, so we soon became partners in crime. We would hang at his place till nine in the morning doing all the things with all the people, and these will be the settings of future episodes. But it's getting late, so here's one last quick one for you. After one after party, around 3.30 in the afternoon, I had to get it together and go to work, and he called out, Hey, Studley, you going to be okay for your shift? And I said, wait, what? And he said, I didn't say anything. Ah, shit. Hey, general public, here comes your bartender. Well, it's last call, so let me give you a tip. Order your booze, then your mixer. Don't say Coke and rum. It's a fucking rum and Coke. Bartenders work on visualization as you order, so if you fuck up the way we build your drink in our mind's eye, you're sending everything sideways. Or maybe that's just the ecstasy talking. Folks, it's been a blast. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And a call to my fellow boo slingers. Send in your stories to cocktailsandwastednights at gmail.com. You can remain anonymous if you'd like. Thanks for listening, subscribing, downloading, and spreading the word. Don't be afraid to give me a good review, even if you're lying. If you want to support the podcast, check it out on Patreon. I don't have any extra shit there, but I'll happily accept donations. Eh. Worth a try. Oh, and check out my video, Just Close It, on YouTube. We'll see you next time on Behind Bars, Cocked Tales, and Wasted Nights. Cheers! And if you don't have any of that shit lying at your... And I just secured my... And amazing live jazz bands. And included a sessions musician, Joe, on... Fucking Christ almighty, what am I talking about? I mean, I've certainly been town by... (laughs) I sat in front of Johnny... Oh, Jesus Christ, no I didn't. It was my first time in the big city, and coming from a Podak... The great thing about the tea was that it stopped running at midnight, which was a great way to get female student buddy... Oh, Jesus Christ almighty, that's not even... Which often resulted in a lot more tips on pickup artistry versus the ins and out of crafting... God damn it. An acute amplification where the inflow... <laughs> inflow. I was 15 yards ahead of him, already sprinting barefoot... <laughs> Eliminating the irrel... I know, this is really fucked up, but on my fucking life, this is what... <laughs> the fresh air felt amazing, and soon Dane... <laughs>